So now we are with Katarina Sikomagni. She's uh, in charge of renewable markets and infrastructure at uh, DG Energy in the Commission. And my first question is, uh, do you think uh, energy market integration is an enabler of the energy transition? Can it sometimes be perceived as a barrier as well? Thank you. Um, I think the energy market is the enabler of the green transition. Uh, it's the best way to integrate renewables, first of all. It is the best way to share those renewables across borders. And it is also the best way to ensure secure to supply so that we can rely on our neighbors. I would even say that uh, if it is sometimes perceived as a hurdle, it's because we don't have enough of integration. We still lack some infrastructures, we lack some marketing integration and some rules on European governance. So huge opportunity, huge possibility, and we need to complete it rapidly. Perfect, thank you. So now my second question will be more on European and national approaches because we see a growing role for national tailor-made instruments and support schemes that might hamper market integration. So my question is how do we strike the right balance between these national tailor-made instruments and European integrated approaches? Thanks. Indeed, uh, we saw during the crisis uh, when uh, Russia unprovoked attacked uh, Ukraine, um, a situation where we were running out of gas, where we had problems in electricity uh, as well in many parts of the EU and member states put in place many uh, measures to protect their consumers and industries. Commission uh, came up with uh, frameworks that allowed temporary uh, measures and now we are coming to a point where the temporary measures will have to be phased out. We learned a lot during this crisis. We also learned that there were many measures that were not so good, uh, whereas other measures were perhaps better. And the answer we gave to it was Repower EU on the one hand for investments, uh, and then the electricity market design for the market rules, for instance, uh, creating long-term price signals that we realized during the crisis that we were lacking. Thank you very much. And indeed, it's true that we might have learned a few things during the crisis on how to better cooperate. Uh, it's good that you mentioned the reform because our last question will be on the electricity market design reform uh, that has been adopted quite recently. Uh, so in the reform, a lot of issues are being picked up, such as offer regulation, grid bottlenecks and long term contracts. So my question is, could you tell us a bit more about one of these topics? Maybe one that the Commission will focus on uh, and work on over the coming months? Um, well, first I think we have to work on all of them at the same time, <laughs> as, uh, as always. Um, maybe uh, if I take the offshore as an example here. Um, offshore offers obviously a huge potential for uh, electricity and uh, the question there is how to plan, how to regulate and how to implement this uh, potential so that we can all benefit from it. So our first action here is to prepare a guidance on cost sharing and that the guidance will come uh, in June, uh, after which we will then discuss it with uh, all stakeholders uh, in order to improve it and to uh, make sure that member states are keen to implement it. So that is the first action. After that, other actions uh, and the references to bidding zones in the offshore, how to ensure hybrids uh, and tarification uh, come together. Those will then follow uh, this first uh, milestone that will come in June. Okay, thank you. So we look forward to hearing about this new guidance.